it is interesting in the sense that they are not regulated as such. Okay, so Alexander, welcome to the studio. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Now we're going to, you're here to talk to us today about the Financial Services and Financial Institutions Act. What would you say are the kind of main policy objectives? What is it trying to implement really? Thank you, Monica. The Financial Services Act and Financial Institutions Act uh, aim primarily at um, increasing the competitiveness of uh, Switzerland as a financial centre. And uh, the manner in which this is uh, to be done is by improving client information. This works both ways in the sense that asset managers, bankers, fund managers should know their clients better, but the clients also have to understand what is being offered and what type of products um, they are being sold, respectively what kind of services they are being offered. And in, sort of in, in the implementation stage, how does that really transpire, as it were? Uh, as to financial products, there will be a uniform documentation requirement, in particular as to the prospectus of um, uh, fund units. Uh, and for any financial product uh, that is being offered to a client, there will be a key information document that has to be drafted a short document, concise, in clearly understandable language that also non-specialists can understand. You were telling me sort of interesting things about asset managers. Um, in Switzerland, the situation with asset managers is quite interesting, isn't it? <laughs> well, for the time being, is it, in, in, it is interesting in the sense that they are not regulated as such. Uh, to the contrary of uh, what is the case in probably any other financial centre uh, or any other reputable financial centre in the world. This will change also in the sense that there will now be a central register of asset managers. Banks will continue to be supervised by FINDA, FINMA as well as securities dealers, fund managers but also collective asset managers. Individual asset managers, those servicing retail clients, will be supervised by a self-regulating organization, as is currently done for anti-money laundering purposes. And there will be a grandfathering clause with an exemption for registration for asset managers who can demonstrate that they have, the, um, that they have at least 15 years of uh, experience and undertake to continue to service only existing clients, uh, so probably more asset managers that are uh, on, on the way to retirement or are um, decreasing their activity. So I can't just wake up tomorrow morning and decide I'm going to be an asset manager? You, you could. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> you could. You could, absolutely. You would have though to um, undergo a basic training if you if the wake up uh, comes after the enactment of the Financial <laughs> Services Act and the Financial Institutions Act and asset managers will also be um, subject to a continued training and development obligation. Okay, so this should um, hopefully level the playing field among asset managers and uh, the disputes we see in the asset management industry that are due to lack of information um, should hopefully decrease with the passage of time, although in the first stages we can expect uh, that litigation will um, uh, may, may increase as a result of uh, new grounds, uh, new causes for dispute being the lack of information of a client. Well, if anything, there's going to be a sort of transition period, isn't there? But you were telling about the, the suitability um, test. That is something which is possibly going to come in and, and help things along, I guess. Absolutely. This is probably one of, the, one of the key innovations of the new Act, in the sense that uh, clients will be segmented into retail clients on the one hand, professional clients uh, on the other, professional to include institutional clients. Now, a retail client may still opt out of the increased protection he is awarded by a retail status by opting into the professional category, respectively the information, um, uh, let's say, requirements that are 
um, a lot to professional clients. What is really new though is that asset managers will have to conduct um, uh, an appropriateness assessment uh, when performing advisory activity uh, on certain transaction and when entrusted with uh, the global portfolio management of a client or when providing advice on a regular basis they will even have to conduct a suitability assessment and uh, this this means that a, a, an asset manager will have to know his clients will have to understand what his clients assets are made of what is his total wealth and whether certain type of transactions are appropriate whether a certain um, asset management profile is really suitable for that client. Okay and are you just lastly are you optimistic about it do you think it is actually going to help the situation provide more clarity and improve the general side of things? I think on the long term we, we should see a, we should see a difference and uh, it can only improve and help Switzerland uh, to um, let's say keep its place among the leaders in the financial asset management industry. Well Alexander thank you for coming in and shedding some light on this matter with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much Monica. Well Alexander Troller and myself Monica Gibson that's all from us here in the studio. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.